Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Uh, Rabbi Stephen here, uh, Rashbi in the house. First and foremost, I want to thank everybody that came out Friday night for my birthday and was there for Saturday morning. We had, I'm going to say about 50 people, and it was beautiful. It was wonderful. Uh, I want to thank Elena again, once again, for accompanying me on the violin. And I want to thank all the people that gave me those beautiful birthday cards. And thank you for the Slivowitz. And uh, thank you for the vodka. Um, I want to thank, yes, I want to thank a uh, special shout out to uh, Yaakov Potlis for the vodka. And yet another reason to come to services Saturday morning. I'll leave that to the imagination. So uh, thanks again. I, 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 I was... I'm touched. I'm touched. Thank you so much. So next week, we'll not be there. Uh, my wife and I are going to be gone. And uh, but so Shabbat Shalom in advance for this uh, Shabbat. Uh, this is also, by the way, a Rosh Chodesh. Now, this is the new month. Uh, Saturday and Sunday are, uh, are the days. It's the Rosh Chodesh, the month of Elul. It's new month. Rosh had Chodesh means new. It's the head of the new. That's what they used to call the new moon. It was a Chodesh. It was. Uh, that's also the uh, the same name for month. Month from the name, from the word moon. Moon month. month new moon. And uh, Elul is the month before Rosh Hashanah. Now during Elul, there's some special penitential prayers that we say in advance of that. Uh, also, uh, some Orthodox congregations will also blow the shofar every weekday before the uh, before Rosh uh, Hashanah and we're kind of gearing up for for uh, the, the new spiritual year Rabbi Hertz the late great rabbi of the British Empire who edited the Sansino version of the uh, uh, publication of the Chumash the one we use at the synagogue the blue book um, that many of us grew up on uh, got it for our bar mitzvahs b'nai mitzvah, uh, bat mitzvahs uh, used to say that the life cycle of a Jew, the yearly cycle, is kind of always in preparation for another holiday. And it's interesting because at the end of this particular portion, Re'e, we talk, they talk about the three pilgrimage festivals. They start with Passover, which is uh, a half a month, two weeks, 15 days after the Israelites left Egypt. Uh, Passover is on the 15th of Nisan, which incidentally is the secular New Year. So it talks about that, talks about the Pesach sacrifice, the Paschal Lamb. Um, then it talks about Shavuot, you will count seven weeks, and you will have the holiday of the first fruits, which is Shavuot, uh, which, by the way, later on also became the holiday when Moshe Rabbeinu came down from Mount Sinai and uh, gave us the Ten Commandments, so it coincides. You will find that a lot of the religious holidays that we celebrate are also agricultural holidays. Passover is kind of the first planting, Shavuot, uh, the giving of the Torah, the receiving of the Torah is the first fruits. Uh, we have Rosh Hashanah coming up in about a month, uh, five weeks, four, four weeks, five weeks. Then we have uh, Yom Kippur 10 days later, and then on the 15th of uh, Tishrei is uh, Sukkot which is uh, commemorates the Israelites living in the heights, but it also commemorates the harvest, the fall harvest, the autumnal harvest, which is why we decorate the Sukkot, the booths, with uh, various fruits and uh, palm fronds from the uh, palm trees. So uh, it's all kind of agricultural. So having said that, um, Moshe Rabbeinu, Haftar uh, Parsha Rei, which as you will see, is in the middle, it's finished, it's in his second discourse. And there's a lot of things that he covers and they seem to be related. He talks about, uh, for example, no private sanctuaries. Okay, they don't want people to have their own separate altars because it may revert into idolatry. There's going to be one central uh, central sanctuary. First it was Shiloh, then it was moved to Yeshurun, which we know is Jerusalem, and uh, um, Solomon built uh, the first temple there. They also talk about um, the laws of kashrut, right? They they reiterate the fact that you will not cook a kid in its mother's milk. Now, Orthodox Jews, uh, they will eat dairy before they eat meat, which is fine, but the Orthodox Jews, a lot of them will rinse their mouth after dairy and then wait a half an hour before partaking of meat. 
people say, well, okay, I've eaten meat, how long before I can have dairy, milk or ice cream or whatever you want to have, uh, depending on the custom. The shortest time is an hour. I believe that's the Dutch. And then there's three hours, which is the Sephardic, and then there's six hours, which is the Ashkenazic. Uh, if you ask a nurse or a medical person, they will tell you that three hours is typically the time it takes for the stomach to digest the meat, which is when it's out of the system. Uh, so you kind of go according to your custom. Okay, why don't we do that? You know, there's been a lot of reasons postulated. People say, well, there used to be the clay bowls and, you know, the, the, uh, the food substance seeps into the pores and when you combine it with dairy, it's not good. You know, uh, a, a lot of other people has, say it has to do with respect. It's respect for the animals. If you respect animals, then by rights, respecting humans is not a big deal. Say. So, but you want to respect life. You don't want to cook a kid in its mother's milk. They say that animals have a maternal instinct and they get traumatized when they see their, their young being offered as food or being used as food. So you do that in a way to spare the animal. The ultimate reason is because God said it's a decree. I mean, we can look for reasons. There are some reasons. We can interpret some reasons. But the bottom line is that Hashem says we do not cook a kid in its mother's milk, so we don't do it. They also then go on to talk about the uh, foods that we can eat, foods that we can't eat. Uh, we all know that we don't eat pork. We can eat ox, goat, cows, uh, deer, heart. That's, that's allowed. It's got a cloven hoof. It chews its cud. And that's really kind of the uh, criteria. We don't eat pigs, like I said. We don't eat rodents like rabbits or squirrels or hares. Uh, birds. We basically eat domesticated birds, you know, like doves, pigeons. Yes, we can eat pigeons. We can eat doves. We can eat turtle doves, uh, chicken, turkeys. We don't eat birds of prey, like ostrich. We do not eat ostrich. Hawks, eagles, owls, that type of thing. Uh, as far as fish goes, fins and scales is the criteria. Lobster, crab, oysters, they're not fish. They're shellfish, as they're called. We don't eat them. They're bottom feeders, whatever the reason is. Uh, again, what's the reason? Hashem says so. It's a decree. Uh, there are some insects that we can eat. I'm not exactly sure of the criteria. The rabbis say that the actual reason has been lost in antiquity as far as which we can, which we can't. They weren't able to properly interpret the Hebrew words, which, which insects they were, so we just kind of stay away from it all. Okay, so <laughs> moral of the story, it's easier being a vegetarian, <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, so um, the other part of the service also talks about um, false prophets. Now, if a prophet comes and says, this is what you do instead of what's in the Torah, then you get rid of the, you get rid of the prophet. Moshe Rabbeinu says, this is the Torah. This is God's law. This is God's teaching. Torah actually really means teaching. We just, you know, law is kind of just, you know, kind of an interpretation of it. But what, what Torah really means is teaching. Okay, this is God's teaching. So God's teaching is complete. We don't add to it. We don't distract from it. Some people say, as I got myself into a discussion once with someone, why do we, conservative and Orthodox Jews, do two days of Rosh Hashanah and Sukkot and Passover instead of one? Because after all, doesn't the Torah said one day? This will be your day, you know, and the first day you will blow the shofar, you know, for Rosh Hashanah. Well, you know, the rabbis put a fence around the law. They said, well, you know, we're kind of far away from uh, uh, the Holy Land, so we want to make sure we do it on time, so we kind of add an extra day just in case we miss it. Some people would retort to that, well, in this modern age, I mean, you always know what day it is. Uh, you always know what the molot is, which is where the moon is when it, you know, becomes uh, becomes a new moon. We know that. We can, can interpret down to the second. So why do we have to, like, kind of guesswork? It's, it's an archaic ruling that really doesn't have any place in today's observance. That may be true. Some people will say, well, the rabbis established it. It's been going on for so long as a tradition, so we just keep the tradition. Some modern synagogues, some modern conservative synagogues are saying, you know what? It's too much of a stress on people. People take one day off for Rosh Hashanah, like this year. Rosh Hashanah is on a Monday and a Tuesday. Yom Kippur is on a Wednesday. That's three days off from work. Some people say that in the modern time, the way we work in this country, it's really tough to do that. So some of them are saying one day of Rosh Hashanah. For myself, I'm kind of on the fence. 
part of me agrees with it that you know having the extra day is kind of superfluous the other part says well it is kind of tradition we've been doing it there is a reason we've got a to special Torah reading for the second day there were specific prayers that are specific to that to the second day of Rosh Hashanah so again it's a consideration down the road so that's basically this week's portion it reiterates that it says you know there will be no separate places of worship we want to keep the Torah intact the bottom line is remember these people are going into the new these Israelites are going into the new land Moshe Rabbeinu lived his life seeing these rebellions seeing this contention and he just wants to warn the new generation going into the land don't do it it's a continuing discourse giving them reason after reason after reason and today when we're out in the diaspora and our communities have spread out there's no more shtetl where we're all together where the synagogue is right around the corner you got to drive you know it's you got communities scattered all over the place it's more important today to be observant to be really faithful to our to our religion to our judaism to our heritage to our culture to make sure it doesn't fall into this year i will see you in two weeks I will be posting, of course, my sermon for this week. Thank you again for the party. Thank you again for attending. Thank you for the cards and the presents and the slivowitz and the vodka. Okay, have a great week. Have a great Shabbat. And thanks again.